Imagine a world with ultra-fast computer processors, super-efficient power grids, and breakthrough medical diagnostic tools, all powered by a new class of materials, a discovery that could rank among the greatest scientific advances of the 21st century. Sounds like science fiction, until the recent breakthrough announcement at the beginning of this month, a room temperature superconducting material could actually make all this reality. That is, if it's legitimate. And that's really the point. In today's video, we're going to unravel a captivating tale of scientific intrigue involving a potentially revolutionary discovery that's now shrouded in controversy, including allegations of plagiarism, data manipulation, and fraud. Everyone's favorite. Buckle up, because we're going deep in this one. Our story begins a few weeks ago on the 8th of March 2023 with condensed matter physicist Ranga Diaz of the University of Rochester, New York, and his colleagues reporting a discovery of a room temperature near ambient pressure superconductor, lutetium hydride doped with nitrogen. NLH. Superconductors are a material where electrons can travel with zero resistance. Zero resistance means zero power loss to heat or other effects, so superconductors can enable quantum computers, magnetic levitating trains, generally reduce the energy demands of the planet by making our power grid incredibly ultra efficient. Now superconductivity isn't really new. In fact, it's been around for over a century with the first superconductor, Mercury, being discovered in around 1910. Since then, scientists have found many more materials that exhibit zero electrical resistance. The catch, however, is that all of these materials need to be cooled to incredibly low temperatures, making them costly and impractical for widespread use. The earliest of superconductors could only remain in a superconducting state up to about 25 Kelvin. That's about 10 times hotter than the vacuum of space, but still incredibly cold. It wasn't until the 80s when researchers discovered high temperature superconductors operating at something like 90 Kelvin or so, the temperature of liquid nitrogen, and as of today, the highest temperature superconductors that we have are about 135 to 160 Kelvin, which is about 20 degrees colder than the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth. Now, apart from cooling materials to extremely low temperatures, there is another approach to achieving superconductivity, and it's by applying incredibly high pressures. In 2015, we saw this in action as researchers achieved a hydrogen sulfide superconductor that was able to superconduct at about 203 Kelvin, or minus 70 centigrade, but required about a million times higher pressure than our atmosphere, about 155 giga pascals. In 2019, we saw reports of superconducting lanthium hydride at about 250 Kelvin and 170 gigapascals, and you can see immediately there's a very obvious trade-off. As we get higher temperature superconductors, they require higher pressures to operate under. So where does this breakthrough announcement a couple weeks ago land? It lands here. It's perfect! Winding back to 2020, Diaz and his team, the researchers behind this most recent discovery, announced a different discovery of superconductivity in carbonaceous sulfur hydride, CSH a hydrogen containing material that was able to achieve superconductivity at 287 Kelvin, that's about 10 degrees above zero in Celsius, I don't know what it is for all you Fahrenheit heathens, uh, but required 267 gigapascals. Allegedly, this was the first room temperature superconductor ever discovered the initial reactions from scientists were actually largely pretty positive. However, not everyone was convinced. Professor Hirsch from the University of California, a condensed matter theorist, noticed some inconsistencies in the magnetic susceptibility plots in that nature paper, which led him to investigate further. His investigation uncovered similarities between this CSH data and a 2009 result on europium, even though these two materials behave entirely differently. And the interesting thing is both had measurements conducted by the very same person, Matthew de Bessy. Although de Bessy, whose name I might be butchering, refused to hand over the original data, an unsuspecting co-author of that paper, thinking they were setting out to examine the results and defend them, 
actually found evidence that the magnetic susceptibility data appeared to have been copied and pasted from one temperature range to another temperature range. That co-author did absolutely the right thing and alerted the journal, and the journal ultimately retracted that 2009 European paper due to data manipulation. As you can imagine, this raised some level of concern about the CSH susceptibility data. When other researchers attempted to reproduce Diaz's results, they were frustratingly unable to. They couldn't even synthesize the CSH material, let alone observe any evidence whatsoever of superconductivity. And theoretical physicists out there also struggled to model the CSH result. Lilia Bori from the University of Rome noted that not a single structure containing carbon, sulfur, and hydrogen was capable of superconducting had ever been found in the two and a half years of investigation since that first paper was released. And kind of unhelpfully, honestly, particularly given the scrutiny that he was under, Diaz refused to provide the CSH data files, claiming on his part that his patent application process prevented him from sharing them. Which to be fair, I guess, could have some level of merit. There's a one year window after you file a patent where you go to strengthen its claims and improve the data quality. You generally try and avoid disclosing information during this period because if the patent isn't successful, you will have publicly disclosed your results and so they won't be patentable in the future because you can't patent things that the public already knows about. However, I think facing such accusations, you could have absolutely released your data under some sort of confidentiality agreement to selected named individuals. That didn't happen, however, because in December of 2021, two days after the European paper was retracted, Diaz and Salamat, one of his co-authors, changed their minds and suddenly published the complete data set for the magnetic susceptibility measurements in an odd act of sudden transparency, totally not prompted by the fact his previous paper got retracted. So that data set gets released in 2021 and almost immediately Hirsch and one of his colleagues, Dirk van der Marl, a condensed matter physicist, spotted some problems in the data. And now without getting too deep into signal processing and noise reduction techniques, as fascinating as they are, they are not the point of the video, the signal that they detected coming out of these measurements will have had some noise associated with it and with the system being measured in general. There also, in all measurements, is a background signal that similarly has noise on it. This could be things like the electronics, the ambient frequencies, or any other sources of just general noise. To clean up a measurement signal, you can subtract the independently measured background noise from the measurement signal that you've recorded. And you should just be left with the signal from the measurement and its corresponding measurement related noise without any background left over. However, if you do this with Diaz's data set, removing the background signal, the noise doesn't correlate with the signal coming out of the measurement. It's as if the background signal and the background noise have been fabricated artificially. Once this point was raised, Diaz and Salamat claimed that in fact they hadn't measured the background signal as they had stated in the Nature paper. They had instead constructed it. On September 26, 2022, the CSH paper was also retracted, citing the non-standard method used in data analysis, which is a weird way of writing, we made up the results. Now Diaz does maintain to this day that the data is valid, but this explanation doesn't account for the data relationships observed by other researchers. So our question, how does this 2023 room temperature discovery stack up? At the moment, the scientific community is, as you might imagine, reasonably skeptical and evaluating the evidence and investigating Diaz's further claims. Some of the scientists that believe Diaz hasn't committed misconduct are reasonably excited by the recent claim, and then I would say the other 99.9% .9 are still waiting for further confirmation from other researchers in the relevant field. Having said that, this study does show some interesting things. At the critical temperature, they show a drop in resistance indicative of superconductivity. They show a peak in specific heat of the material, a property related to how readily a material changes temperature at the appropriate point and sort of of the appropriate shape. They also demonstrate the Meissner effect, the expulsion of the magnetic field from the samples, which hasn't been shown before in similar materials. But honestly, at this point, we are at such a crux that regardless of how badly you want to believe this discovery, 
all of the previous behavioral evidence suggests you should be reasonably suspicious. At this point, the main question is, is the data valid? Requests from researchers for samples of the material have been, again, met with refusal as the team cites patent applications in process. In a 2021 talk later posted to YouTube, Diaz said they had recently raised $20 million into a spin-out on earthly materials to further develop the science behind these and similar discoveries, citing investors including the CEO of OpenAI, Sam Altman, and the CEO of Spotify, Daniel Ek. Except it turns out, this isn't true. In an article by Quanta, this has been corrected to an aspirational statement by Diaz. At this point, it feels like my eyebrows need more real estate on my forehead to truly express my level of concern for this idea. Now, is it valid to worry about disclosing your idea or sending people samples of your material in case they steal it? Yes, 100% valid. But sending it to an independent lab for verification under NDA and MTA material transfer agreement is 100% normal. And at this point, absolutely, before any investor, if you are thinking about it out there, should touch this with a 100 meter stick, get it independently validated under material transfer agreement by an independent research lab. Now this is really important. We're in a weird place in science at the moment where journals like Nature, which used to be incredibly prestigious and obviously still do have very good research, cutting edge research published in them, are increasingly having to play the internet clicks game. So while going after more and more sensational sounding papers, and I think in doing so, are not doing as good of a job as they need to be to make sure some of the wilder claims are sufficiently validated before publishing. I care about this topic a lot. When I'm not making YouTube videos, I co-founded a science investment group to make sure of two things. One, that important breakthroughs in science that could change the world get the attention and the funding and the support that they need to make a difference in the world. And two, to make sure that junk science doesn't make its way out there into the world, blow up in everybody's faces and ultimately make people scared to invest in science because that sucks and that means that no important ideas are coming out of labs and turning into reality. Looking at you, Elizabeth. Mr. Diaz, I think at this point we can all say it is the world that will be waiting. I really hope that this is a radical breakthrough as we've been ultimately led to believe, but with bold claims, substantial evidence is needed to back them up. If you like this topic, check out this video I did on Spin Launch, everybody's favorite space rocket yeeting machine, where I think the science is broadly valid. Still might blow up and totally not work, but the idea at least is an interesting one. Check it out.